All right, guys, today we have a significant update in regards to the multiplayer component when it comes to The Last of Us Part Two. I'm sure as many of you are aware, there has been a lot of conversation within the community recently, pretty much since yesterday, when we abruptly found out that there is going to be no multiplayer component that ships with The Last of Us Part Two, And this was very confusing for a lot of reasons. I've seen a lot of people get defensive I've also seen a lot of people get maybe way more upset than they should. And so I'm kind of just sitting in the middle here because I have a strong feeling that Naughty Dog is doing something a little bit differently this time. And I feel as though this most recent post that they have here where they do confirm multiplayer to some capacity, I think really backs up my feelings. I actually had a completely separate video recorded and ready to go basically diving deep into why I firmly believe there is going to be Last of Us multiplayer to some capacity, just not at launch. And I had everything, you know, all the evidence there, but now there's no need to do that because they came out with an official statement. So I want to read this statement and I really want to go in depth. I want to talk about the community's reaction because believe it or not, even though Naughty Dog has issued an official statement that does, in my opinion, very clearly confirm multiplayer for The Last of Us to some extent. There are people who are very upset about this. Uh, I greatly underestimated yesterday just how many people were actually going to be upset over this. So let's read the statement. So Naughty Dog officially posted, we want to address multiplayer in The Last of Us Part 2. As we've stated, the single player campaign is far and away the most ambitious project Naughty Dog has ever undertaken. Likewise, as development began on the evolution of our factions mode from The Last of Us Part 1, the vision of the team grew beyond an additional mode that could be included with our enormous single player campaign. Wanting to support both visions, we made the difficult choice that The Last of Us Part 2 would not include an online mode. However, you will eventually experience the fruits of our team's online ambition, but not as part of The Last of Us Part 2. When and where it will be realized is still to be determined, but rest assured, we are as big a fan of factions as the rest of our community and are excited to share more when it's ready, Naughty Dog. Now, the most important thing, there's two things I need to highlight with this statement that we need to pay close attention to. The first is that they are confirming that there is a multiplayer mode that is being developed that is set in the Last of Us universe, but it does not necessarily have anything to do with the Last of Us Part 2, thus why it's not shipping with it. The other thing is we need to acknowledge how ambiguous they're being here, and they're doing this purposely. Make no mistake about it when I tell you this is not a statement that Naughty Dog was prepared to make. I mean, maybe they were. What I should say, is they didn't want to have to talk about multiplayer. Some people, I think, are taking this the wrong way because some of the response I've seen from people is that this is them basically saying that they started work on you know, a proper factions mode for online or to ship alongside The Last of Us Part Two, and because it got too ambitious, now it's gonna be a whole new different game or a whole new different project. It is not. Do not take this as that. This is Naughty Dog clearly telling you, okay, that this is going to be multiplayer set in the world of The Last of Us. They tell you this first off by saying that they did start work on a factions mode that was just going to ship alongside the game just like in The Last of Us Part 1. And they decided that, you know what, we, we need to make this something bigger. We need to make this its own thing because it is too big, right? Um, and... You know, another thing that I think people need to pay attention to when we talk about this is what, you know, even Naughty Dog doesn't make it clear here, like, they haven't determined yet, like, you know, what exactly it's going to look like or how it's going to be released. I have some theories of my own here, and I would appreciate if you guys hear me out on this because I know for a fact that my prediction here is for some reason going to upset some people, but you have to understand the logic behind it. You have to understand that Sony and Naughty Dog are being incredibly smart about how they are handling this. And you know why 
they're being very smart and they're also being very careful and extremely meticulous they are doing this because make no mistake I have to reiterate that the last of us as a brand is insanely valuable okay the last of us is one of the most po it is it's just it's a juggernaut it's an absolute juggernaut so that I think what Sony and Naughty Dog both realize is that they have to do more with this brand now some people get nervous at that but you shouldn't this is only a good thing it means that they're pretty much doubling down on the last of us as a brand because it, it has the appeal it has the reach it's a known quantity at this point and people are very much aware of what the last of us is and people as of right now are very aware of what the last of us part two is what I think is going to happen, and I think what all signs are pointing to here, is I've seen a lot of people say that, oh, there's just going to be a free update. That's just going to be a multiplayer update. No, it's not going to be that. Uh, okay, it's it's not going to be as simple as you just, you know, download and update. I, what I think it's going to be, and I think Sony and Naughty Dog are doing this very purposely, is at some point in development, you have to understand this game has been in development for a long time. And multi, the multiplayer gaming landscape has changed greatly between the time they started development on this game, between the time that The Last of Us 1 launched, even the remastered version on PS4, up until now. I'm almost certain that both Naughty Dog and Sony started work on this and realized that they could do a lot more. And so they started to do a lot more. And then they started to realize that, wow, okay, this is really huge now. And we already know that the single player game like it, I don't understand if there's if there's people who feel that what they're going to get in The Last of Us Part 2 is a single player experience isn't enough. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is Naughty Dog out here saying this is their biggest most ambitious game ever. I have absolutely no problem paying $60 for an amazing single player experience. Frankly, I believe God of War proved in a few other games as well, but specifically with God of War um, you know, most recently, and even Spider-Man, they proved that you don't need to have any type of multiplayer offering to make it worth $60. So I know that there's some people who feel that there's that fear where it's not going to be worth the money. I don't know what to tell you there. There's people who have a fear that this is basically them. Uh, they're going to make a whole new separate game that they're going to charge $60 for. They're not going to do that, okay? I can't guarantee that whatever this mode is that they're going to release separately, this multiplayer mode, I cannot guarantee that they won't charge for it. I will say that the likelihood of them charging for it is very, very low. It would absolutely not be in their best interest. You ha Again, you have to think logically here. First of all, the thing you have to take into account is just how big of an event The Last of Us Part Two will be Okay, when it launches. It's going to be huge, and it's going to make waves for months to come. But at some point, and this is just the reality with single-player games that we have to face, the hype will die down. It will, and we have to, and Sony's going to have to move on to the next thing, as will Naughty Dog. But if you want to think of a good way to extend that, is, hey, maybe just focus on the single player at launch for the first six months after launch, and then, bam, maybe at E3 2020, have the big, huge announcement that we have the long-awaited multiplayer component, and it will not be connected to The Last of Us Part Two. I think that they make that abundantly clear. Not only did they, I, I personally thought they made it clear yesterday, that if there is, you know, if we're speculating that there's going to be some kind of multiplayer mode, it's very clear it's not going to have anything to do with this game they are shipping. They're making that clear here. I mean, they're literally saying within the statement that it's not going to be part of The Last of Us Part 2. So what it does tell me is that it will be based in The Last of Us universe. Now here's my prediction. I apologize for waiting till the end of the video to, to say it, but my prediction is that all signs to me are pointing to Sony deciding to make a standalone multiplayer offering based in the Last of Us universe. This is what Naughty Dog is currently working on. What, what first started out as <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, small standalone multiplayer mode is now a fully fleshed out massive multiplayer offering that could stand on its own as something that is separate from The Last of Us Part Two. Otherwise, if it wasn't, there's no way they would consider doing this, right? But that's where we stand now. And I believe when it releases, it will be months, maybe six months or later, maybe not that long, but months after Part Two is out, and it's going to be free to play. Now, I know, I know, 
I know that many of you are like, MBG, are you out of your mind? When has Sony ever done free to play? Hear me out on this one, okay? You have to understand that one of the biggest things that has happened between the time The Last of Us 1 released and where we are now is Battle Royale and free to play games have become, have they've proven how lucrative they can be. Now, I'm not saying. I am not saying that the Last of Us multiplayer component is going to be Battle Royale. Please do not take that from what I'm saying. I am absolutely not saying that. Simply pointing out that we have learned, and what Sony has learned, is that you can release a free-to-play multiplayer component with microtransactions that when they're done fairly, you can make a ton of money. And that is the most important thing that I think people are not acknowledging here. now. When I say free to play, there's a very specific reason I believe it's going to be free to play. And here's another bold prediction that I know people are going to lose their minds over, but I, it's just where my mind's going. I think it's going to release for both PS4 and PC. Now, before you jump on me, understand that literally like one or two months ago, Sean Layden confirmed officially that PlayStation is going to be putting more multiplayer games some of their multiplayer games and offerings onto PC to quote, lean into a wider install base. So do not attack me, I am just the messenger. If you wanna completely disagree with my prediction, no problem, but just understand, this is something Sony is doing. Now don't get upset though, because there's a they're being very strategic about this if this is how they choose to do it. By making it free to play, they do not have to worry about PlayStation Plus. Okay, there were a lot of people that I saw when I mentioned this telling me, like, that doesn't make sense. How would they handle PlayStation Plus on PC? Well, turns out free-to-play games, free-to-play multiplayer games through PlayStation, you don't need PlayStation Plus. There you go, not a problem. So not only will it make people who already bought the game happy, because it's like, oh, well, we can't be upset about it. It's free. It's free for everybody, okay? If they decide to charge for it, that may cause a problem because then the people who paid for the game are going to feel a little bit gypped, right? Not everybody. Like, for me personally, I don't care. Like, I know for a fact that I'm going to get my money's worth with The Last of Us Part Two, but some people will certainly use that against them. So they can avoid that potential problem while also solving the problem of how do we get this multiplayer component on the PC, you know, without running into the problem of PlayStation Plus. So then you ask the question, well, if they do decide to do this MBG, right, how are they going to make their money? It should be more than obvious. You, we need to acknowledge that The Last of Us Part 1 multiplayer had a lot of microtransactions. And I don't think they were egregious. I'm not honestly 100% aware. I just haven't heard anybody ever complain about them. If I'm not mistaken, I think they were mostly cosmetic or something like that. But the problem is in order to access this and make no mistake, Sony made a ton of money on those microtransactions. This is where I'm saying like I didn't buy for a second that they don't have multiplayer for this game because they had an established formula with factions in the first one where they implemented microtransactions and it was very successful for them. They made a lot of money off that. There's no doubt. Why would they leave that money on the table? Why would Sony leave that money on the table with a sequel? It made absolutely no business sense whatsoever, right? Maybe to the gamer, you don't care because it's like, I just want a great game. But business-wise, made no sense. Now, <laughs> this is how that's how they would make their money if this is how they chose to do it. If there's one thing that a game like Fortnite has proven, not to mention Fortnite in the Last of Us video, but we need to be realistic here, is Fortnite has shown big publishers how you can make a ton of money through microtransactions. Now, I'm not advocating for them, but when they are done correctly, it turns out it can be a win-win situation. We can get access to a great game for free. Not that I'm saying Fortnite's great. I honestly haven't played it, but you know, people say it's a good game, so whatever. Point is, a lot of people play it. They access it for free. And they, Epic Games is making a boatload of money through microtransactions. Who's to say The Last of Us couldn't do, like, apply that same concept? Granted, it absolutely does not have to be Battle Royale, but why is this so insane for people to think? If there's one thing that the Sony executives have proven with their recent statements is that they are ready and willing to try new and different things. Believe me. And this may be their first foray into really trying to see just how much another, you know what, I, I know I'm getting ahead of myself here because I don't want to make this video too long, but it's already turning out long. One other thing I do need to say here is that some people are saying MBG, there's no way, there's no way Naughty Dog or Sony would, 
or specifically Sony, would take their beloved, you know, Last of Us IP in any capacity and put it on another platform. Where I think you may be wrong about that is you have to understand they would still be retaining the value of their console by doing this because what they're going to do, think about this. There's going to be a certain group of PC players, right, who don't play The Last of Us Part 2 because they're like, I'm not buying a PS4. I don't care. I'm not planning on playing the single player story. You know, uh, I'm not really interested in it. I just, I don't have a PS4. I'm not even paying attention to it. Then they find out later on the multiplayer component is releasing on PC. And guess what? It's free. So there you go. Suddenly you get a taste. PC players get a taste of The Last of Us, what it feels like to play it. You know, and if they choose to just stick with the multiplayer, there you go. Sony can make money off of people paying for microtransactions, right? But there's going to be a certain number of people who play it and be like, oh my God, this is amazing. I need to go get a PS4 so I can play this single player experience. And boom, they get the boast, the, the boast, the best of both worlds. They get the high player count by offering The Last of Us multiplayer on multiple platforms, PC and PS4, and they can also rake in the money through the microtransactions, so business-wise, boom, there you go, you're locked in, but they are also retaining the value of their console by making sure that there's a specific experience. You can only get a huge chunk of The Last of Us that you can only get once you own a PlayStation console. I want you to really marinate on this one. I want you to really think about this because I know that there's people who are like, MBG, you're whack, you're crazy, there's no way, but really think about it. It makes a ton of sense. It not only does it make business sense, but it, in reality, how could anybody be upset over that? I'll tell you, as somebody who values the importance of exclusive games when it comes to console gaming, I would have absolutely no problem with the multiplayer component whatever this Last of Us multiplayer component is, going to PC. That would actually, in my opinion, be pretty genius. It's if they decided to put the single player experience, then you're going to hurt your console big time. But I need people to really think about this. You need to think about Sean Layden's words. You need to think about the way Naughty Dog is wording the statement. You heard it here first. It's going to be standalone, free to play, way bigger. That's I'm going to end the video here. The other thing we need to really focus on is just how ambitious this online component really is. Okay, clearly it's big enough and improved enough to where they're confident, both Sony and Naughty Dog are confident that this can stand on its own. I know that there's people who think that this is just going to be some basic free multiplayer update that just comes and goes. It's not. This is going to be a big deal. This is going to be Sony's way of sh figuring out how can we extend the hype. How can we stretch the hype out as far as it can go? Because once the hype for the base game, The Last of Us Part Two, starts to sizzle down, die down a little bit, boom, multiplayer component, free to play, accessible on, P on PS4 and PC, and it's, it's massive, it's huge, and, uh, and yeah, I, I think that's honestly, I would be surprised if they didn't go that route, because if they don't, then it does mean it's just going to basically be a standalone DLC that, you know, I guess people who bought the game, maybe they get for free. We have to understand this is not a lost legacy situation. This is not, um, you know, Naughty Dog doing a whole nother single player expansion or anything like that. This is a full blown multiplayer thing that they've been working on for years and they're still hiring people. It could be a while until we see it. We might not see it in 2020, but the point is it's going to be big. And because of that, you better believe that this is not just going to come and go as some free update that you're going to get. This is going to be huge. That's just my prediction anyway. I'm getting the same vibe and the same feeling I got when I was predicting The Last of Us Part 2 release date as February 20th, 2020, and I happened to be one day off. I'm getting the same vibe here with what they're doing with The Last of Us multiplayer, especially after reading their official statement. But that does it for the video, guys. It turned out way longer than I wanted it to. I appreciate anybody who stayed till the end. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave it a like and be sure to leave your thoughts down below. I'm sure you're already way ahead of me on that one. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.